Hello everyone, welcome to .NET Empire. My name is Venkatesh and I am a technical consultant at Microsoft. As we know, the generative AI is getting too much popularity in these days. Every industry is trying to make their own application very much intelligent. In order to do this one, the LLM has to efficiently interact with your own custom code or custom APIs, then only it will be more domain specific intelligent. But with the raw LLMs, it is not possible. For that reason, OpenAI came up with a new plugin specification which would try to interact with your domain specific APIs whenever it is required. Microsoft has released a new framework called Semantic Kernel which will efficiently interact with your native code on LLM to perform those complex jobs using the extensive features. In this series of videos, I would like to share my knowledge how you can leverage these Azure OpenAI models with the Semantic Kernel. If you would like to see more videos about this Azure OpenAI and Semantic Kernel, please consider subscribe this channel. In this tutorial, I would like to show you how quickly you can leverage this Azure OpenAI models and Semantic Kernel to do some simple job. Without wasting time, let's dive into the code and see how you can do this one. Yeah, as I have mentioned, Microsoft Semantic Kernel is an open source SDK that allow you to build AI agents and call your existing code. As of this recording, the current version of the semantic kernel is 1.5.0. In this tutorial, I just set up simple example where we will be extracting the user emotions based on their product review. In order to achieve this, you have to follow certain rules. Those are, first you need to use a kernel and then create a builder. Once you have the builder ready, then you have to configure your Azure OpenAI models with the semantic kernel. Then we will be creating a simple prompt with a set of instructions how the LLM has to work on top of our user input. Then using this simple prompt, we will be creating a semantic function and then you can run that function to get the results. Just make sure you have installed this NuGet package, then proceed further. For the simplicity, I have kept all the secrets in the .env file and then using this NuGet package, I will be loading those environment variables to the code level. If you have a doubts from where you can get this uh, API key and endpoint, this is the place that where you will be able to uh, retrieve those keys and endpoint. So once you have those details, then make sure you have some active deployment available in your Azure OpenAI resource. In my case, I have deployed this GPT-4 with a version of 1.1.0.6. Using the .NET ENV package, I am loading all my secrets into the environment variables and then storing them in the local variables in order to build the builder and set the configurations. So as I have mentioned initially, first the very first step is to create the builder by using the kernel object. So this is the way that you need to create a builder object using the kernel. Once the first step is completed, the second step is to configure your Azure OpenAI models with the semantic kernel. Here I am using Azure OpenAI chart completion method and passing all the deployment name, endpoint and API key. Deployment name is nothing but the model which you have deployed into your Azure OpenAI services. So once you have that configured then, then you have to build that builder so that you will be getting a proper kernel. Using this kernel, you will be performing the rest of the operation. As I have mentioned before, the next step is we have to prepare a simple prompt. This prompt will contain a set of instructions how that LLM will work based on your input. So I am instructing that you are in an intelligent system and you will be extracting a user emotions based on the project review and I did mention those emotions also in this link. and then some more instructions I have given when if it is not possible to extract any emotion how it has to respond and also I have instructed how LLM has to respond back once it is identified the emotion so this is the one magic variable that we will be keeping in this prompt so semantic kernel is intelligent enough to pass that user input into this magic variable whenever it is ready. Once our prompt is ready, then next step is to create the function. 
This is the process to create a function. We have multiple ways to create a function, but for this example, let us go with a simple prompt. So I have used this API create function from prompt where I have passed down that prompt which I have created. Now I stored that in a variable. If you have noticed this one, this is the kernel function. Okay. As I have mentioned earlier, we will be using some magic variables inside our prompt. Then what does it mean we have to pass on that value when we are actually invoking the function? These are nothing but kernel arguments. Now our job is to prepare those kernel arguments out of the user input. Now just for the simplicity, I have created that user input here. Once you have the function ready and arguments ready, the only step remaining is invoke that function. So this is the way that you can invoke. There are, there are again multiple ways to do this same job, but this is the simplest way that we can do. So kernel object, then you can invoke the function by passing the arguments here. Now, once after this invoke is completed, the results will become and sit into this emotion results. Then we will be just showcasing the details. So let me run all the cells and show you how it will be. If you have noticed now, we got the emotion is identified as a needs improvement. And reason is the LLM is giving the thought process behind why it is with the needs improvement as a emotion. And then how to solve this one. These are all pretty much how we instructed the LLM the same way that it has given us back. So this is a simple demonstration how you can leverage the Azure OpenAI models with the help of semantic kernel. It's a simple function technique. In our upcoming videos, we will further dive into all the topics available in the semantic curve, including these functions. Thank you for watching the video. If you like the content, like and subscribe the channel and wait for the next video. Thank you all.